We've sailed to Tonga and it's our final destination of the season. What I mean by that is for the first time in three years, we're gonna haul out the boat, pack our bags, the cats too, and fly back to the USA to see family, friends, and stock up on much needed boat supplies. The amount of wow. preparation, logistics, and bureaucracy ahead of us to make all that happen is daunting to say the least. But we'll dive into those ugly details later. Flights are booked. Cat paperwork is turned in. Mostly. <laughs> Mostly. We have secured crates. Uh, we've scheduled our haul out. I feel like we've made our list. We know what we have to do. So, yeah, I think I we've, break. Yeah, we've done most, most of all of the, the tough decision making. And now we have just the hard, like physical labor left, which is getting the boat ready and getting ourselves out of here. <laughs> so much clean. <laughs> oh my God. Anyway. Before we dive into that, we've got about two weeks. So we are gonna spend one week of that-ish playing, kind of seeing Babau, and then we're gonna spend the other week working like dogs. So, let's go play. I'm fired up. Okay. Look at that. <laughs> Lazy sailing. <laughs> Conserving fuel. Three and a half, four knots. Not too bad considering we're not properly trimmed or anything else, but so many turns and everything, it's hard to want to like, you know. Work. <laughs> that hard, I mean, why not? You can just sail lazy, it's fun. We're moving. It sounds nice. Calm. Not a lot of wind. <laughs> <laughs> Not even enough to unfurl here. Wow, I forgot what a pleasant sailing experience it is. Being in the protection of land, it feels like it's been so long. It's just all open ocean sailing we've been doing the past year or more, it seems like. And it takes just a little poof of wind to get us moving. We were doing six knots a second ago with like 11 knots of true wind speed. And it's calm and peaceful and relaxing. And this is my new thing. I want to do only inland sailing from the, for the rest of my life. This is amazing. <laughs> oh yeah, this is nice. Flying. Staring out into the sea, waves come crashing up to me. My toes slip into the sand. Dream that I'm with you. Staring out into the sea. I've made us a sea snack that I'm quite excited about. Baricones! We haven't had these since Ecuador. And I don't know why I've never thought to make them before, but our uh, expat friend that we made here, her name is Adriana and she is from Ecuador. And so she made these for us the other day and I was like, oh my gosh, why have I not been making these this whole time? Because hello, plantains are at every island just about. All you need is some plantains. These are the ones that uh, most of the islands have. They eventually turn kind of a yellowy red, but you buy them when they're green, just like this. I uh, use potato peeler, peel off the outside, slice them up, like flash fry them really quickly. Then you swoosh them down and then you put them back in there and fry them up. 
super easy. I should have probably shown you the process, but you know, we're sailing, so it's a lot of in and out. Anyway, another day, but Patagones. Beans, Pico. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Classy. Classy. All right, I gotta make sure we're not gonna run to that island. <laughs> Everything this morning thinking that like you know if you dress for the occasion the weather will cooperate clearly not so I think we'll just take it easy for today it's I'm not gonna lie it's been a little bit stressful all the uh, the planning and the, the paperwork and I don't know I have decision fatigue so I'm gonna chill drink some wine watch a movie and hopefully the weather will perk up tomorrow. The weather didn't perk up, but when you get a last minute invitation to go searching for whales, you go. Humpback whales make their way here every year to bask in the warm protected waters, mate, and give birth. And this is one of the few places in the world where you can swim with whales. We swam with whales in French Polynesia and it was one of the most magical experiences of my life. So getting to do it again feels like winning the lottery. We didn't find any mamas with their calves this time, but we did find these two playful and curious juniors. Humpback whales were nearly wiped out of existence by whaling in the 1800s and early 1900s, with only an estimated 10,000 left worldwide by the time the Endangered Species Act was born in 1970. Thanks to all the global conservation efforts, humpback whales are no longer on the endangered species list and the population is strong at 80,000 and growing. Which just goes to prove that when committed, we can rebuild ocean biodiversity and abundance. Like 
the wheel. Come right back up on the box. Which is like chaos and amazing at the same time. The juniors are so much more oh, active. Man. man, they just play and play and came close. Yeah. Aww. Oh, here Aww. they come again. And dolphins. Ooh, I'm getting worn out. I'm in decent <laughs> shape and I'm worn out. I don't know if I call uh, it decent, decent shape. <laughs> I feel like it's been a really long time since we've been free diving. Uh huh. So. <gasps> we should put our watch on. So oh, practice. Well, yes, that. But I was also thinking about the fact that, I don't know, it just feels like it doesn't take long before you have to like rework at it all oh, again. Yeah. You like know? 20 foot deep. Yeah, it's, it's kind not... of like, yeah, it's like you You're only like make it to 30 or 40 feet, maybe 50. You'll be down there for like 20 seconds and then have to come back up. But when you do it every day, it's nuts. Like you get good fast, but you also lose it fast. That's the way I feel anyway. That's why we have these watches. Yes. They help with practice. The dive watches are a good investment, especially for free diving. You'd think just for scuba. I think they're more valuable for free diving. I mean, obviously you need a dive computer. <laughs> they can save your life <laughs> yeah. when you scuba. I just, yeah. Whatever. Yeah. We're not going on this free diving snorkeling mission on our own. We're gonna take Nate and Jordan with us and well whoever else wants to go off of that floating hostel that they have. You just did selfie transition to selfie transition. Amazing! <laughs> My skills as a filmmaker are just that good. <laughs> uh, Yeah, you're welcome. No, I We're just started. In. Okay, I gotta get camera ready. <laughs> gotta wake up a little bit. <laughs> so we came over here the other day for just like a quick swim for some exercise. And there were all sorts of lobsters and starfish and nudibranch and yeah, lots of neat little creatures. So we're hoping that they're still here and we don't look like a bunch of liars <laughs> making stuff up. <laughs> we were promised underwater delights and I expect to be wowed down there. <laughs> but if not, I'm already wowed. This is a beautiful spot and the sun is starting to peek out from underneath the clouds and the water is nice and turquoise and it's crazy because it's like full, full jungle and then just like cliffs and then perfect because of clear water. Coral you can see straight down to the bottom. So. It's pretty good to me. This is a nudibranch. There are more than 2,000 different species of these creatures throughout the world's oceans, and each with their own unique feathery gills, vibrant colors, and horns. 
this one is a Spanish dancer. When they crawl, their edges are rolled in, but when they swim, the edges unfurl and whirl around like a flamingo dancer skirt to propel them forward. And as if that isn't cool enough, they don't just lay eggs, they lay egg ribbons called, wait for it, a Spanish rose. How artistically appropriate is that? You may be in the kingdom of Tonga, but our Spanish theme adventures aren't over yet. Next stop, La Paella restaurant with about a dozen new friends. We like to initiate all our friends through a ritual known as Shambong! <laughs> First time Shambonger. First really? time. Yeah. Virgin Bonger. Oh, big day, big day in my life. Now you've already met Jordan and Nate. Nailed that Let one, me introduce you to our local friends, Kel and Adriana. Kel sailed his way here from Norway and fell in love with Adriana while docked in the Galapagos. <laughs> Can I burp? <laughs> I lost my glam, guys. They've lived in Tonga for 10 years now and, along with a few other locals, are taking us to what is no doubt the best restaurant in all the kingdom. All right, let's go. Tapas, BYOB. Hey, do we have this? We have booze. Okay. One bottle of nice French wine. Are they in the boat or not? You good? <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs> I hope I haven't oversold this night. We go every year and we have a blast. Oh, let me just pull my shirt up. <laughs> <laughs> This is the island of Tapana and the Spanish gem known as La Paella. I'm from Valencia. Yes, I'm no bad. I'm sorry to disappoint you. Melissa is Nikki. Hello. Hello. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Maria, along with her husband Eduardo, sailed here from Spain decades ago and have made this island their home. They're quite the duo whipping up tapas and paella like we're sitting at a Michelin rated chef's table. And while the food is legitimately worthy of more than a few stars, the unique touch here begins when the food ends. Maria and Eduardo are not only the hosts, the cooks, and the servers, but once the dishes are done, they're also the entertainment. Grab one before Nikki gets in. Nope, all mine. Thank you very much. <laughs> and I will use all four spoons. <laughs> Just quickly lick them before we grab one. <laughs> Oh, 
More cowbell. More cowbell. More cowbell. We're waiting to stop. We're not going to be on the bed. been a whale of a tale with Spanish dancers and gypsies, but the playtime is over and the work must begin. What was that? What? You want an encore? Encore! 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 This is first time for everything. You play something. He doesn't know anything. Okay, now anybody who actually knows what they're doing? Yeah. <laughs>